Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Craig Deleuze coming at you from the FPC uh, headquarters. Uh, right now, we are, are calling on a fire mission. This is a very important, uh, it, it's vitally important uh, that we are active and that we are engaged in the process of trying to kill uh, these two particular Senate, these two particular bills. Now, these are budget trailer bills. Now, mind you, uh, normally, budget trailer bills are not where important policy is supposed to be done, where there's significant po changes in policy. Well, this is a significant change in policy, and they're utilizing these budget trailer bills. And, and the reason why it's important is because is these things are put into bills where there's dozens of other items that are included in, in terms of, of, of small, it's what are supposed to be small changes, and the changes are supposed to be connected to a budget item in order to make it easier to, to deal with a budget item? Well, in this particular case, it makes a significant change. And here's what, here's what these bills do. It has to deal with the definition of the fugitive, uh, fugitive from justice. Uh, for a number of years, a fugitive uh, from justice, according to the FBI, was considered to be anyone who had a warrant, right? So if you had a warrant, you were considered a fugitive from justice. Well, the problem with that is, is that it never distinguished what type of warrant. So as they would get that information to ATF, who is in charge of, of enforcing uh, NICS, uh, now once again, NICS being the background system, uh, FBI, FBI was the group that uh, uh, administered it. Uh, they were the ones who kind of ran it. Uh, and then uh, ATF was the group that, ATF was the group that, uh, uh, that enforced it. Well, they're like, look, we can't go after everybody in every state that has a warrant. And so their definition of fugitive was from justice was, a, was different. It basically meant that you actually had to be evading justice. One, you had to have a warrant for a felony or prohibiting misdemeanor, but then you also had to actually leave the state. You know, you had to be going somewhere, and it had to be with the purpose of actually trying to avoid prosecution. Well, for years, there was this difference. And so what happened was, in California, if you had a warrant and you went to apply to get, uh, to get a, a firearm, and they did the background check, well, in essence, what would happen is, is that if, if you had a warrant, it would, it, at least if it was entered by DOJ, that warrant would then come up and you would be denied your right to be able to get a gun. The, the problem was, it's, and, and that's pretty much about where it would be, and so you'd have to get it cleared up, the warrant cleared up before you could purchase a firearm. Well, at the beginning of this year, or sometime this year, there was a change, and FBI said, okay, we're going to go with ATF's definition of what is a, a fugitive from justice, which basically meant that you had to be, once again, you had to have a felony or prohibiting misdemeanor, you had to be out of the state, uh, or out of the state, you had, to be a, you had to be fleeing from justice. Well, in California, they didn't like that. They didn't like that new definition. They wanted anyone with a warrant to be, still be a fugitive from justice. So... In these bills, AB 103 and AB uh, or SB 87, they included language that made if you have a felony warrant and you own, possess, or purchase a firearm, you are guilty of a felony. If you have, if it's a misdemeanor warrant, then you're guilty of what would what would essentially be a wobbler. But the problem is this is that you have been accused of a crime, and because you were accused of a crime and you own a firearm, you would now be considered guilty of a crime. If it's a felony warrant, you're guilty of a felony. If it's a misdemeanor warrant, then you're guilty of a, you'd be guilty of a wobbler, simply because you were accused of a crime and you owned a firearm. Now, We've tried to have this conversation with members of the Budget Committee, with members of the Public Safety Committees, with the members trying to get them to understand why this is an issue. For some reason, most of the Republicans don't seem to be saying anything about it. They're voted against it, but they don't seem to be speaking up about it. And the Democrats, well, they're, they, they, are, they either don't know what's going on and don't care, uh, don't care to understand it, or they know what's going on and are trying to make gun owners who are accused of a crime actually guilty of a crime. This is just bad law, period, any way you do it. And the worst case about it is it didn't even go through the policy committees that are used to voting to violate or break our or take away our rights. So anyway, we need you 
to, to make sure that you are letting legislators know. So uh, we're going to uh, – oh, I forgot to put the link in. I'm going to put the link in here. I need you guys to go, and I need you guys – oh, actually, no, I take that back. The link is there. I need you to go. I need you to click on that link. We need you to send a message uh, to, to all 120 members of the California State Legislature. That's who it's going to go to, and let them know that you don't want to – you don't want them violating our rights. This doesn't just go against our Second Amendment rights. This clearly goes against our due process rights. You cannot be made guilty of something just by being accused of a crime. You can be guilty of a felony just by being accused of a crime. So please make sure, uh, go to the website uh, and, and encourage uh, your legislator, encourage all legislators to vote no on AB 103 and SB 87. Thank you so much for taking a minute to watch. Uh, please make sure to stay active and keep tuned uh, here to uh, Firearms Policy Coalition on Facebook uh, as we might have some more updates coming for you. Take care.